All right, so this time it's uh, kind of getting into quadra values, something that kind of needs a little more discussion, needs a little bit more sussing out at times, particularly in its importance to typing, figuring out whether a certain person you're looking at falls into this quadra value or that quadra value. Um, it is critical to getting the typing right. Okay, it's not just figuring out what functions are they using. Is it FI or is it SI or is it this? It's also what quadra do they belong to? Does everything they're doing fall in line with one of the quadra values, right? So this time it's talking about, I want to talk about the gamma quadra. Um, There's some pieces that I noticed kind of get lost a little bit. Um, so gamma quadra, which is going to be your, LIEs, which are ENTJs, your SEEs, which are your ESFPs, ESIs, which is your ISFJ in Socionics, and your ILIs, which are your INTP in Socionics, okay? The main functions at work here, or I should say main elements, is going to be a preference for NI, there's going to be a preference for SE, FI and TE. These are the four main elements that are at work here in some way. All four of those types are using those exact same um, uh, elements. Okay. They're just using it in some kind of different order. Right. That's what they're all playing around with. So this is a quadra that really values a lot more pragmatism. They're a little bit more have a harder edge to them, a harder pragmatic sort of vibe than say alpha quadra or even beta quadra, right? They're looking for what works, what has been shown to work, um, what's useful and applicable, right? They're not as interested in getting into ideas that are the what ifs, that wouldn't it be cool if, like, what if this happened? Like, what, what would that be about, right? Wouldn't it be interesting theory if like something fourth dimensional reality kind of kicked in and then like that somehow changed the events of World War II? Like it starts getting into very theoretical conversations that to a gamma sounds just useless. It sounds impractical. It's just what's the point of these silly conversations? That's the feeling that gammas are getting, right? Those kind of like fun flight of fantasy sort of type of conversations is something you're more likely to see with alpha quadra types, maybe alpha quadra um, NTs. You might see that with some of the other, uh, maybe even deltas that also have a lot of NE usage going on. And they enjoy playing around with ideas and concepts that seem to have no practical value. It's, it's just sort of for the amusement of the conversation, just to have some fun but doesn't seem to have any real basis in reality or any immediate usage and so on, right? So gammas tend to have a more hard edge like that. What's the value of this? What's the point of it? Where is it going? What are we going to do with it? If we're not answering those questions, then what's the point, right? What are we really messing around with? Um, gammas are also more likely to have a harder edge when it comes to people. Being a bit more critical of the value of people sometimes too kind of saying look that person there i don't like them because they're not useful or i don't i don't think they know what they're doing i think they're incompetent i think they have their head up their ass you know whatever they'll they'll say things like that sometimes directly to the person sometimes publicly out loud um and even if they don't say it sometimes they'll be thinking that like yeah i'm just not going to be bothering those people anymore or that person because i think they don't know what they're doing they're pretty worthless. And we'll see them or say harsh stuff like that. They're worthless. Um, that's especially true for the gamma NTs. Um, but the gamma SFs can also feel that way too about people. Gamma SFs are also much more likely to very quickly go, I like this person. I don't like this person. This is somebody who's important to me. I value them as a, as a person. I value who they are and what they're about. I think they're good for me in some way. We can work well together or maybe have a more personal relationship or something like that. So I like them. I'm going to keep them close. Those people, I don't like those people. I have a, I have a thing about them. I, I don't, 
There's something about them I don't like. I don't trust them. I don't, whatever, I want to keep them away from me, right? So again, a much harder edge to how they approach things. Now, I'm often referring to alpha quadra in this comparison because your alphas have NTs and they have SFs, just like gammas have NTs and they have SFs. So a lot of the quasi-identical types are either in alpha and gamma, right? So it's very obvious or very common, I should say, for you to have a hard time differentiating between, say, uh, an LIE ENTJ versus an ILE ENTP. Or maybe you're struggling because you're trying to figure out between an SEI ISFP from alpha compared to an ESI uh, ISFJ in gamma. On a lot of superficial levels, these types can look a lot like each other, right? And you're trying to kind of figure out, well, is it, is it an I, is it this, is it that? Well, the quadras is one of the reasons you can tell the difference. Okay, it's some of the stuff you're looking for. Okay, um, again, alpha, usually a little bit more playful, a little bit, they enjoy fun conversations for the, for just for fun. And overall are looking for fun. They like pleasant atmospheres and environments. They're much more welcoming of people, of almost anybody. They, they can welcome a large group of people, including casual people they don't even know that well and be very warm towards them. Whereas gamma is usually, again, much more hard edge, can be more critical. Um, that doesn't always mean that gamma hate everyone and they're just going to start negatively criticizing people um, or attacking people or anything like that. No, they, they, they can be pragmatic. They can realize that there's a time and a place for that kind of stuff. There's a time and a place to aggressively go after people, but they don't have to. So... Um, other key points, gammas, again, very practical, very hardworking a lot of times, trying to get things done, trying to achieve things, and they're trying to be independent. This is big time critical, underline, independence. That is a huge staple of what makes gammas, gammas. They are the most individualistic, most independent of all the quadras. Any of the four of gamma display high independence levels. Sometimes they do it unconscious. Like they're not really trying to, to separate themselves, but it's like they just kind of always find themselves sort of being separate. Um, it's just an instinct that they just keep kind of gravitating towards. So this is where it ties into money. Gammas are often known to be very, very big on, on being businessmen, entrepreneurs, CEO types, people who are interested in being merchants, profit, making money. That is misleading. And the reason it's misleading is because what the gammas really want is independence, autonomy, freedom to choose their fate, freedom to choose their life. If you have a lot of money, it is one way in which you can achieve that autonomy and independence, right? If I have a lot of money, if I'm worth billions, then I'm beholden to almost no one. I can kind of do whatever I want to do, right? I don't have to worry about a boss. I don't have to worry about what day I come into work. I don't have to worry about a deal. I don't have to worry about anybody really because I have so much financial independence and security that I can just go around doing whatever I sort of choose to do. It, it affords me an enormous amount of independence. So the key thing you really want to be focusing on with Gamma is not, oh, are they interested in business or money? No, it's are they interested in independence, autonomy. They may get into jobs and careers that allows a lot of autonomy. The job itself, the role, allows them to kind of work on their own schedule the hours and the times they want to work with, pick and choose the clients they can play with, um, have flexibility in the kind of money they can earn and so on. Uh, you know, these kinds of things, maybe there's some kind of a position or title that goes with it that affords you a certain amount of independence to now make your own choice and decisions with the least amount of possible interference from other people. Gammas are often likely to want to work in an independent way. So even if you have an extroverted gamma, they may be talking to other people and socializing, whatever. 
and they don't mind that, but they kind of enjoy saying, this is my job and my role. That's what I do. You have your job and what you do. You do your thing. I'm going to do my thing. And we could talk afterward and, and, and throw our, our completed work at each other or whatever. But I want to be able to work in my own way. I don't want to be working collaboratively where now I'm forced to have to compromise or, or navigate other people's decisions and things. Gammas really want to do the independent thing. Okay, it's they're the most individualistic and the most um, independent. So it's not about business and money. Any other quadrant can be interested in money, can be good at money, can be good at accounting and, and all that stuff. Okay, what the gammas really want is the independence. So don't look for business stuff necessarily with gammas. What you're looking for is they they want the independence. Okay. Um, cover most of it pretty much with that. Um, again, gammas don't, because of that high independence and that pragmatic kind of hard edge, they are typically not very good at forming groups, being part of large groups, being part of clubs and communities and a lot of stuff like that. Um, they're usually not so great at that, right? They, they almost shoot themselves in the foot in a sense because they're so independent minded that that ends up clashing with your ability to form coalitions and groups and things like that. So they, they tend to not always be so good at that, right? They're tending, they're tending to form relationships on a more case-by-case -case basis. I like that person, so I talk to them. I like that person, so I talk to them. And then that person, and then maybe... I have a party or I have a gathering where I bring these random kind of people from different parts of my life and just sort of like plug them in, you know, they, they might do something like that, but it's much harder to just enjoy being part of some club or some organization because, well, we're all here. Um, it feels very much like you see certain organizations where you have to take like a company photo or you have to do some company outings. Um, you're, you're part of some club or you're part of a school. That's a good one most people can relate to. You're all going to the same school and so on. And like, let's all get together and do the pep rally and do the uh, yearbook photo. And we're all gonna like take pictures in our school shirt and like, eh, you know, and you're, gammas tend to resist that stuff. Gammas just don't just instinctively don't like this like large group of people getting together and we're all celebrating yeah this holiday or this school thing and it, gammas are so independent usually that they're more like listen i like these couple people these are my people and i'll take a picture with them and we'll do something together with them but i don't i'm not really all about all these people together and all just because we happen to go to the same school or, or the same club or like whatever you know um uh gammas um just again they they're not they don't enjoy that kind of large warm we're all smiling together taking a photo being a part of some organization even though i barely know half these people like you know I, we're not like that we tend to like to pick people that we know and we care about and so on um so this is kind of an area that's it, it's a double-edged sword for gammas again they're so independent that it ends up kind of isolating them sometimes um and this is particularly a bigger problem for the gamma NTs who are not as good on the feely, emotional people side of things. Obviously, the more SFs, gammas, are better with the people, feely, emotional stuff. So they can, when they feel like it, kind of interact with people and make friends and socialize more and do the group thing a little bit better. Um, even if they don't really believe in it that much, they can still kind of fake it till you make it, so to speak. They just kind of do it a little bit more at will um um yeah so anyway those are the major pieces the independence the, the stronger harsher edge the, the strive for personal achievement and and striving for more intimate more closer relationships with people picking and choosing these are the people i like these are the people i want to deal with because i like them they're useful to me they're effective at what they do. They're good at what they do. And I, I appreciate and respect that. 
you know, or just, I just like them. They got something about them that I just like, or my FI just likes them and just wants to keep them around. So that's usually the gammas for you. So uh, I think for now that about covers it. I've rambled enough. Um, I'm sure there'll be more. So we'll stop it there. So let me know as usual, like and comment, subscribe. What do you think? Are you a gamma? Does all this resonate with you gammas? Um, does this also kind of help the non-gammas understand gammas better? Or at least kind of go, yeah, yeah, I, I get where gammas, I've seen gammas doing that. I know what you're talking about. I see how gammas instinctively kind of seem to want to keep them to themselves and do this kind of stuff. You know, um, I'm much interested to hear those kind of comments and see how these things really play out in reality, how people are seeing and observing them in reality. Right. So anyway, um, that's enough there. On to the other quadrants.